Charlie, it's not that long ago uh, you were told that you have cancer. How long ago was that and that what's was been in, happening? Um, March uh, 2011. Um, I was busy driving buses and having a good time and really not just getting over um, the death of my wife but uh, the passing of her, of her death, of cancer. But she, she was just uh, so instrumental in my life and I was, it's hard to get over it but then all of a sudden you get the kick in the tummy and all of a sudden you find out that you have a small cell carcinoma on your neck and it relates to lung cancer and uh, it kind of, um, it, it's like getting a, um, a radioactive buzz through a needle. It, you, you, you're hot from the inside out, not from the outside in. And it's, it's, a, it's an awful feeling. And uh, there are some people who uh, go through this and they say, how am I going to cope with this? And when I was told that I did have the cancer, I wanted to make sure that we are on the right track. So I rang a, uh, a professor friend of mine who was looking after a problem of mine at RPA. And uh, I just said uh, to him, um, Who's, who can you recommend to take on my case? And um, Michael Boyer, Professor Michael Boyer, who is the most um, eminent and prominent oncologist in the world on small cell carcinoma, happens to be a friend of his. Yes. And he said uh, he will take your case. And all of a sudden, I felt it was the most important thing in the world to have the, if you've got the best looking after you, you do as you're told. You don't take a side step, you don't take a front step unless he says, do it. So I got a good rundown on exactly where it was and he was very honest with me and I had my son with me at the time and we went through the, um, the, the shock in a sense, it, was, it, was, it's, it is a shock, you know, it's like, hey, you come here, you, you're, you're going to lose your life. I can't imagine any human being facing a greater shock. Well, I was lucky that I, I went through cancer with Jackie, my wife. That was just in 2008, wasn't yes, it? Yes, yes, yes. And she, yeah. she, she passed away uh, six months after her operation. And um, I said, well, her advice to me was very simply, when your number's up, your number's up. And um, my children, um, were very positive about uh, that particular statement of hers. Great loss, tragic as it was, now all of a sudden they had to face me doing the same thing. And so I, I had them over here to actually explain to them what I had and uh, what I was going to go through and what have you. And of course there was a dilemma of my son being, still being hard bitten by the loss of his mother and of course my daughter has still never got over it but it doesn't matter that she's handling it she's pacing herself as I think she's a very brave girl like her mother and she's she's been very very fabulous to me she comes over with her husband um, twice a week sometimes to have dinner I do the cooking yeah. <laughs> I enjoy that. Well, I think that's uh, so commendable uh, of your, and brave, going to tell your children, look, I have this, and this is where, what's going to happen. You laid it out all for them. Forewarned is forearmed, mm -hmm. and uh, a heavy burden, but one that I think that they would have wanted to share. Well, I had to show some strength. Yes. And I, we packed up here and we went down to the car park underneath where they parked and they had the kids and my daughter-in-law, like my son's children. And um, I, I just looked at them and I said, I'm, I, I'm very strong on this. I said, but I want you to be taller than me. I really want you 
wants you to be there, right up there. Don't treat me like a, a sick person. Treat me like a person who is just about to, uh, as a sportsman, as say, for instance, as a boxer, yes. getting into the ring for the for a championship fight. And that gave me an idea of how I was to 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 actually uh, take the um, this thing to a to a centering situation where I had a fight on my hands, and I had. I put it all onto my um, internet. I have uh, over 50 good friends on my internet contacts, and I put them all into the same real friends, so to speak. Yes. And I kept them involved and kept them informed and told them how I was going to add it. The help I got from them was absolutely fantastic. But that's that's one of the things that um, gave me the the strength. My friends, you, uh, the boys on the buses, all of them, uh, our boss at the time, Chris Bradley, um, <clears throat> and people up and down the, the peninsula were just absolutely fantastic. They were really, really good. And we went through this and uh, I get phone calls, what else are you going to do? You're in the middle of chemo, you uh, you sit down and you're watching a bit of television and you're tired because of chemo. Um, I'm, it's, it, you've got to do something. So you, you just let them know that you want them to be in touch. And they kept being in touch and it was great. They get yes. every five, five calls an hour. You, uh, in fact, uh, before doing the casual driving, I ran your own business, I think it was your, as, a, as a hair stylist That's for 45 yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if we could just move into that along the path uh, as a young person, because you had a pretty young, uh, interesting young life. Where, where were you born? I was born in Rose Hill. Yes. Where the race course is. Aha. Uh -huh. And um, my, um, as a matter of fact, it would be from here to Fairlight that far, it was that far away from the race course to the front gate of the front yes. of the Rose Hill Gardens. It wasn't Rose Hill Gardens then, <laughs> it was just Rose Hill. <laughs> yes. And um, they didn't have the car parks they've got now. They, no, not many people had cars then, but they had a train line, the um, Carlingford um, Clyde line that, that took them, a by, by branch line into. Rose Hill Race Course. Right. And of course, the thousands of people that had just go through. I was born at the top of um, Prospect Street and Good Street, and um, that was where my life started. My father was a butcher. Uh, my mother was um, at that stage, well, a mother, <laughs> just just bearing me, and um, I was so um, really. Um, infatuated with my own story, getting it from my mother, because you don't know what you are when you're a young person. You don't, you know, you're a little devil and you were this and you were that and you played up and you I were can't imagine you ever being a little <laughs> devil, Charlie. I was a climber. <laughs> I climbed, I used to climb up uh, lattice. They, they put a, a, a five foot lattice fence around between the two blocks, as you would in those days. Yes. On a block. And I used to climb those ladders, yep. um, gates and whatever, and uh, Char Charlie would take off. <laughs> and then, because before you became the hairstylist, you, uh, after your initial schooling, you, you were, a, uh, were an apprentice, I believe, for four yeah, well, years. Yes, I, my, How my, did that work? My uh, father and I, we didn't get on very well. He was um, a, a very, very old school tradesman. Yes. You out the back, me out the front. Yes. And when I think you're good enough to come out the front, that's when you come out the front. Right. Now in many instances, there are so many shortcut, shortcuts today that allow young people to come out and be up front before they're ready. Yes. And hence, there's another little, well, perhaps one of the lessons in life people have to learn. You've got to have experience 
and you've got to bring that experience out, um, not over a long period, but to be educated correctly in the, in the, in the fundamentals. And um, one day he wasn't there and uh, he, was, um, he was actually going to the races and um, he, he'd always concentrate on the first two races. And of course, he'd, he'd take the money out of the, the little safe he had it on the side, yes. go down and back the favourite in the first two races, and of course he lost everything. Came back to the shop at half past one because we opened till three in those days yep. on a Saturday. And um, <clears throat> I've got to take a drink of water. So yeah, by all means. <clears throat> yeah, sorry. <coughs> And I, he happened to cop me up the front because there were only two um, of the um, butchers on. Yep. And um, my mother wasn't well at the time, so she wasn't working in the shop. This was when I was sort of just at the end of my, well, middle of my 14th year. Yep. I wasn't 15. I was, yes. I'm a 15th of June person, right? So it was the middle of the year. And um, I got a bit of cuffing. As a... As a young man, I had a, a hard life. Yep. Um, just had to be out of the way. I had to be in the right place at the right time, not the wrong place at the wrong yep. time. Yep. So um, anyway, um, I jumped on a train. Um, I had a little blood on me and a bloody shirt. You know, I hit a concrete wall when he threw me around. Yeah, yeah. And I got to Chatswick, yep. and that's where I asked the news agent on top of the Chatswood station, which was just a little little alcove on top of the station at those in those days. Um, I'm looking for a job, <laughs> and this guy just opened up the Herald. He said, "Well, there's one going down the street in um, Help Street." I thought, "Oh," he said, "Here's the," and he just tore it out of a Herald, and gave it to me, and he said, "See how you go." Well, I wasn't really dressed for an interview, was I? I mean, I'd just come that, out of a little brawl. That's right, that's right. And I'd travel from Granville to Chatswood. Yes. Because that's where we lived. Yes. Granville's at the bottom of Rose Hill, by the yep, way. Yep, yep. Anyway, um, I, I was accepted on face value, and um, they felt sorry for me. Yep, yep. So I suppose a little bit of uh, toil and blood uh, got me the job. <laughs> So and that so and this started you on a career yes, in so I hair styling. Yes, I came at styling in 1960. Yes, I started um, training properly, or in the, to use the correct grammar, uh, I, I commenced training um, just after Christmas uh, in 1960, and there, I, I must have showed some sort of talent or some sort of ability because the uh, the the, uh, my employer was from London. He was from um, Mayfair in London, yes. which is a Swiss area. And, um, and the, as a matter of fact, the place was called uh, Paul of Mayfair. Well, I stayed back and practiced my pin curls and putting rollers in and combing up and whatever. By March, I didn't realise it, but they'd entered me into a competition, an apprentice competition. And this particular competition ran over a couple of weeks and I won it. Now, I surprised everyone, I surprised myself. Because only three months previous, or even four months previous, you know, I was, um, oh, I just wasn't doing what I was ever, ever thought I'd be doing. Yes. So, that, that started me off, it was an elevator. It just started giving me the lift I needed as a young man. And of course, as a hairdresser and having women teach you, you know, you go into a situation where you're a ladies hairdresser, you're not the educator, they are. Yes. And this is where I learned my manners. My boss and his wife and 16 other staff couldn't have done a better job than, the, than my client, than, the, than that client. Yes. By the by, the August of that or the September of that year, I had a clientele, and by the a year after I started, I had the second biggest clientele in the salon, including the boss. And from there, 
Um, we, I just went on. Um, I had a, a good upbringing in the in the first place with with my mother and my all my family life. They were wonderful people, and um, they gave me all the character and the necessities in life that I needed to accept responsibility and to accept character. Yeah, and look, you were you had a folk you were in a folk group around yes. this time too, which yes. uh, 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 intrigues me, um, and. Uh, because of, I think, a group called the Sapphires couldn't make it on to, and bandstand. you ended up on Grandstand. No, Bandstand. Oh, sorry, I meant Bandstand. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Actually, Dick Clark just recently died. Yes, I know. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's in America, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah, Brian Henderson's Bandstand, and it was a, only a, an hour and a half show on Saturday afternoon, but this kind of expanded a bit more, went over two hours, and yeah, well, I, had, I played the guitar, and... Uh, uh, my other two mates that I met at a Christmas party. One worked in chapel music in the city and the other fellow was a banker with the uh, Bank of New South Wales. Yes, West Bank. yes. And uh, from there we, uh, we formed this group. And yeah. we, uh, you don't know until you start. I, I wanted to harmonise and, and, and I used to practice in the hallway at, at the salon that chats with it and there you go. It was as good as an echo chamber. You know, and I used to sing the diamonds. Yep. And uh, the Four Seasons yes. in, the, in, the, in, the, in the hall, you know. Yes, all was, these groups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do I, I'd like to give you a, a couple of... <laughs> I wish you could. A few bars. I, I could, I, I'm lucky to give you a few bars yeah. talking. <laughs> yeah, see. Yeah. But anyway, um, we got together and uh, we were successful. And, yes. Uh, we kept uh, ourselves together for a while, and we we did uh, some some great gigs. And uh, but I was in the middle of a training session. In other words, I was in the middle of an apprenticeship, and uh, I was getting in around eleven, twelve o'clock, sometimes twice, three times a week. And I was only seventeen. And, yes. And Mum said, "Look, Charles," she said, "You've if you think you're that good." And you can put your life, or put music and, and, and show business in charge of your life. If you're that confident, do it. But who's going to pay the bills later when something goes wrong? Right? And it hit me like, a, like, a, like an apple pie right in the face at that time. And I said, no. So I cut down the professional side of it and I got a couple of girls together. And we used to do parties and stuff like that. We had yes. a lot of fun. Yes. Another one of the girls played guitar. Another girl played um, uh, the, the uh, well, castanets sometimes. She, she was a, a real, real mini musician, you know. She played the, what did the salvos play the? the uh, castanets? No, or no, the, no, no uh, castanets are Spanish. <coughs> yes. The salvos use them. Yeah, I know. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Uh, a marvelous instrument. Yeah. And um, tambourine. Tambourine. Yes. That's it. And uh, <clears throat> from there, it was uh, quite unique. Um, our little sound. We used to, we used to have um, probably two gigs a week, but, but I'd get home at ten. You told me once of a very interesting story where you met Sammy Davis Jr. and that was oh, at a late club, that, I think. That was earlier. That was with the boys. We um, we won a talent competition. Yes. Talent quest, and our prize, apart from a meal, at the Latin Quarter um, in um, in the city, um, it was a terrible meal. <laughs> It's a shocking meal. I can say that because they're out of business now. They're gone. Yeah. But in that in that audience was uh, a couple of professionals at the time, and one of them was Sammy Davis Jr. He came out to do um, gigs on Channel Nine and what have you, and he was standing there. And they got him. They actually got him up to to do a a song. Yes. And he said, "I need someone to back me." Well, of course, there's a there's a seventeen piece band there. And he's looked at us, because we were on earlier. He said, I want the boys. And we, we actually, we got motivated pretty quick and we got up there. And I put my guitar down 
and uh, Jim Bat put his bass down, and we just looked at the boys and said, show the, show the fellas your charts. And uh, here's me talking to the Sydney Davis, Jimmy and I, all the charts went out, like, you know, hurry, you know. Yes. And I forget what he's saying, but we backed him up vocally, harmonising. And if we didn't know the words, were you denied? No. <laughs> We're as good as a, a, a girl singing group or a young young guy singing group, you know, backing up. Yeah. It was well, fabulous. Fa fabulous. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, just bringing it back to your, well, you liken it to uh, being in the ring, uh, like a boxer fighting with uh, cancer. You were, when you mentioned these to me previously, your number one point that you mentioned was faith in yourself. Can't go past that. Yes. You can have faith in your, your, your family. You can have faith in your friends. And you can have faith in a mentor. But you're the one that has to carry it out. Yes. And so you have to have faith in yourself. And also, knowledge and, and a, little experience, a lot of experience. Is it too high? Don't kid yourself. Is what too high? The yeah, what, well, what is too high? Oh, right. Yes. Yeah. You, you know, um, accept the fact, one way or another, that um, this is a serious cancer. Yes. And you've been told that it will perhaps go, and if it does go, it won't be for long, it'll come back. And that's what I was told. Yes. So, just there. It was a little bit of a sponge. I could just get that little bit of a squeeze out of it and I'd get a drip out of that. And it helped me. Have faith in yourself. And that's this is what number it is. one. And I'm, well, you've really just said once again how having faith in your friends has been a help to Absolutely. you as well. They, it's, it's like actually looking around yourself and having a, um, a good look at life. And then you've got to look at the red, just what we're looking at now. Where you came from, where you've been, where you are, perhaps not so nonchalantly, but where you're going. And Charlie, too, you've also mentioned uh, how you have faith in the medical professionals Absolutely. that you are dealing with and in modern medicine, that it is a forever making a headway. Absolutely. There's been, um, <coughs> there's been a lot of uh, things written about um, all the... You've got to have faith in something. So rather than... Uh, I mean, you can have faith in herbal medicine. You, you can have faith in um, the, 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 the big-time religion. Yep. You know? Now, the, the, my grandfather used to say to me, he said, you can throw a pound on the floor and if you can't bend down and pick it up, it's not worth two bob to you. I like, I've never heard that, but I like Haven't it very you? That's much. exactly what it is. Yes. If you don't go down and get it, it's not going to come to you. Yes. And so therefore my faith in the medical profession is because you, I've always had good people around me. Yes. And I've, I've actually not vetted them, but uh, I'm a good character. I feel good character, good about character. Yes. And all of my friends have character. Yes. And those that are on the outside of the of the bag, that maybe I don't know. They, it's not that they haven't got cam, um, character. It's just that they just haven't come in and welcomed themselves to to my offerings. Yes. As as a as a mate. Yes. That's and that's what we all go through. Yes. And that's how I feel. This, yeah, you've got to have uh, faith in yourself. Uh, some of the things you have said to me, I have found uh, deeply inspirational. You have said uh, that maintaining a positive attitude is, is um, very important, but I, I can imagine that sometimes there must be dark moments when that is not the easiest thing to do, but how do you cope with those dark moments? Maybe when you're alone in the middle of the night, what? Well, that's where the dark, the dark horse is. Yes. 
And that's the fight. That's the real fight. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you can, uh, like for instance, um, you can be laying there and all of a sudden you feel a twinge. Yep. And is it or isn't it? Now, you're not going to answer yourself that question. No one's going to say, yes it is, or no it isn't, it can't be, whatever. No. Go straight to the medical profession, the, your, your specialist, or get in touch with the person who's looking after your, your well-being and your wellness, and um, have a talk. And um, it didn't take too many tests. Um, the second time, which is just recently, it's, the cancer has come back. But um, look, even before then, the, 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 the great times, these are the things that keep you together. The great times that you've had. Um, it, it's not that I don't want to talk about what's happening at the moment to me. Yep. Um, but all the people during my youth and my young family area, at my, the time of my young, young, yeah, when I had my children and uh, when I had, uh, when my mother wasn't well and my father died, not of cancer, he died of a, just, um, he just everything just broke down with him. But uh, mum had uh, cancer and she survived, she's 92. She's, she's come out of this. Yes. And she's still alive and, and and to actually ring her up right now, yes. the first thing she's going to say to me is, you know, how are you going? You know? Right. How do you feel? Apart from, and she did, that doesn't, it's not that she doesn't know. You know, she said, I know you're tired, and I know you, you're weary, and uh, that's the way chemo gets you down. But how do you, how do you really feel? I said, well, <laughs> it just seemed like that. A case of Chardonnay over in college, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Well, it's, that's, look, you've got to look at that. People would say, oh, drink. And, you know, I said, I say, okay, it's your next breath. Yes. It's seeing something beautiful. It's a, it all goes in succession, the whole, the whole thing. It's an amazing thing. And it's a succession in life, isn't it, really, yep. when you think about yes. it. Charlie, I've known you for the last five years. I've been very pleased to have known you as a friend, as a workmate. Um, certainly all the people who use hop, skip and uh, jump, they don't just like you, they, they, they love you. And uh, I can understand that. Now, I think we can pretty well uh, bring this to a conclusion because I know you, you cannot speak too long with your throat, but uh, it's Just been wonderful. It. <laughs> and I want you, please, to, you have the last words. Well, the, uh, the last five years, not, well, not so much the last five years, since I started with Hops, Give and Jump, um, uh, getting out of hairdressing and going into bus driving, I surprised everybody. And that's where I learned uh, the next phase of my life. You know, we do go through, as you know, as everyone knows, there's phases of life. It's um, tears, stages, um, whatever. And there's, a, there's so many things to influence you and me and everyone around us. And this is again, comes, to, comes down to the positive attitude that you give you to yourself. Think, think of what you'd like to do and what you want to do, not what you have to do. And that the have to doesn't come into it. It doesn't come into it. It's what you want to do because it's good. And that's all there is to it. And when you go through these stages, the influence of other people on you, you can say yes or no. But the character of the person always is instrumental in how you carry out your job, how you carry out your, um, 
attitude, how you, how you feel about things. And people turn around and said, can say, you know, he's a great guy. But then again, did, what do you say to a person that just hasn't measured up to the character that you portray him really to be or want it, that you, he has to be? Yes. And it comes down to your use, your middle stages of your life, how you've treated your family, how you treat your mates, how you treat um, your loved ones. I'm talking about, when I say loved ones, I'm talking about guys. You know, that I've got five or six really special mates. Yes. We talk every second night. And you never get sick of talking to them. You really don't. And uh, you don't walk up to them and say, mm, would you be my special mate? <laughs> it's like, here, you really come here and I'll put the collar on you, you know, we'll go for a little walk. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, that's not the point at all. It's you, you be there when they want you. And you could be there. you've got to be there for your family, you've got to be there for your mates, you've got to be there for work, you've got to be there for um, just general things. But it all comes down to a principle of, of, of being positive. And to be positive and to be loving brings out kindness. And it's, it's, not, it's not religion. It's your character. Yeah. Charlie Tubman, we'll close it there. And I really... Oh, look, thanks, mate. That's a pleasure. It really is a pleasure. And uh, thank you for being a friend of mine, a good friend of mine. Oh, thank you, Charlie. And thank you, Brendan, our cameraman. <laughs> thank you, Brendan. <laughs>